Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a drawing about the movie Midway. It's a World War II movie about one of the crucial battles in the Pacific. It was done in a combination of graphite and a black colored pencil and as you can see it's a complex drawing with uh, multiple elements. I'm going to be talking a little bit about my drawing process and about the movie. Let's get to it. So, like I said, <clears throat> I decided to make another compound drawing which will include these two characters and a scene of a dive bomber flying away from a destroyed Japanese carrier. The technique that I'm using is a combination that I used in a couple of my recent drawings. I like to combine a black colored pencil with a graphite pencil. I use usually when it comes to graphite I usually use an HP pencil and a 2H pencil and I occasionally use a bit of graphite powder but for the darker areas I use a black colored pencil. As for the brands, I normally use Stadler or Kohinoor graphite pencils. And as for the black colored pencil, I can use any brand. This one is a Primo, but I've also used Faber Castells and some others. Uh, so I'm doing these goggles. And I, you'll forgive me if I don't know exactly uh, the proper terminology for the pilot's gear. All I know is what it looks like and I'm going to do my best to make it look realistic. But one of the things I like about uh, both the graphite pencil and a black colored pencil is that they give you a lot more control and precision for drawing smaller details which is not exactly the case with charcoal charcoal can be a little bit messy I wanted this to be a slightly cleaner drawing and both types of these pencils have their advantages and disadvantages I found that a black colored pencil here was very useful when I was drawing this pilot's hat to produce a realistic looking texture now the two characters which are in my drawing are the characters from the movie, the pilots uh, Dick Best and Wade McCloskey. Uh, they are portrayed by British actors Ed Skrine and Luke Evans. But even though, like I said, these are British actors, they did a pretty good job uh, with the American accent. So I'm finishing the work on the hat here and you'll forgive me but there are portions of my video where I didn't use my artificial light so this was drawn on um, by a window and I was using natural light I just forgot to turn on my uh, lighting but I think you can still see most of the detail uh, this is a very detailed drawing by the way as is usually the case with these uh, compound drawings when I ever, whenever I do these compound drawings I like to have a combination uh, of a portrait and some some other kind of scene in the background. <clears throat> now, I also needed to capture the likeness of the actors from the movie, which can be a bit of a challenge when you are drawing on a smaller format. And the size of this paper is 9 times 12 inches as usual. Vertical orientation. But because it's a 
complex drawing with multiple elements and because the size of the paper is not too big uh, the faces uh, had to be a little bit smaller so <coughs> achieving likeness was a little bit challenging at this point uh, I was progressing very nicely but the my character didn't really, really look like the character from the movie so I had to make certain adjustments mostly to the width of the face and the shading around the eyes as I've always mentioned when drawing portraits it's always a good idea to uh, step away from your drawing and look at it from a distance and that way you can notice some of the distortions you've made to the facial structure <clears throat> the important thing to remember is not to get caught up in the detail even when you're doing a small and detailed drawing like this but to pay attention occasionally to the larger areas of lighter and darker value and the relationships between them because if you get those rights ultimately uh, you will have no problem achieving likeness but while I was shading the face here there were a number of issues I think uh, my face was a little bit too wide and I narrowed it down here as you can see so that the facial structure eventually started to resemble Ed Scrines a lot better and I also did some additional shading around the, uh, around the eyes and fixed the shape of the nose and that kind of improved the whole appearance because, because he has very peculiar looking eyes and mouth so I really had to try to do my best to capture those features of his I don't really know much about the actor uh, I've seen Luke Evans in many movies I think uh, I've seen him in the Immort Immortals where he played Zeus and then later in The Hobbit even though I didn't watch the third part of The Hobbit but as you can see here uh, my footage is now a little bit my footage here is starting to be a little bit better because uh, I turned on the artificial light and now the, uh, the the light is coming from the right direction and uh, you can see what I'm drawing a little bit better so I did a, a nice bit of shading on the hat and on the goggles as well. You can see those reflection in the goggles. If they are indeed called goggles, I'm not really sure. Aviator glasses, whatever they are. They're not really glasses. I don't know what they are. But um, I also did a nice work on the texture of that hat so with uh, with this combination of a graphite pencil and a black colored pencil when you're using the black colored pencil for the darker details it's easier to create that nice range of value and those nice contrasts to create a realistic looking drawing I'm moving on to the rest of the gear and the jacket so I'm going to be working on that and maybe at this point I could say a few words about the movie I thought it was a decent movie I usually don't have very high expectations when it comes to uh, modern movies most of them suck honestly but this one was decent it was a good movie I later saw that it re received some pretty bad reviews I don't know exactly why that was the case the movie does have its flaws but honestly it's way better than most of the junk that's produced nowadays I guess one of the things that some of the casual reviewers didn't like uh, was the fact that the movie required a little bit more knowledge of World War II and not just uh, the event 
that was the the events that were described in the movie but also about the technology and the airplanes used in it but I thought that it was a decent movie and that it was also a pretty realistic movie some of the craziest parts of the movie are actually true they actually happened uh, some of the less realistic aspects of the movie are the dog fights with the Japanese fighters because the Japanese pilots uh, were better trained and they also had much better aircraft so they probably did a lot, a lot better in those uh, air-to-air -air encounters with, uh, with the enemy airplanes but other than that I thought that it was a pretty realistic movie far more realistic than some of the recent movies like for example recent World War two movies like for example Fury which I thought was completely unrealistic but even some of the movies which are generally considered to be realistic like uh, Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers which was a great series are horribly horribly unrealistic in terms of their portrayal of military tactics and infantry movement and things like that So I've done uh, most of my character on the left and now I'm going to move on to McCloskey. I had to do a lot of sketching here freehand. It would have been much easier if I had traced this because, like I said, I don't really know much about their gear. But I'm going to do my best to sell it, to make it look realistic. And he has a pair of these goggles as well. And there's going to be some nice reflections and contrast on them as well. Luke Evans is a good-looking guy. I hope I get his face right as well. This is probably a part of the radio device, communication device. And I'm doing all of these darker details with a black color pencil. I only did some of the lighter shading with a graphite pencil. I did a whole bunch of drawings back in 2016 and 2017. I did a whole bunch of drawings using nothing but a black color pencil. I think I'm going to make a separate video on that because I made some really nice drawings using just a single pencil, a black color pencil. But I think a combination of a graphite pencil and a black colored pencil works really well. Uh, one of the artists on YouTube, uh, Mark Crilly, even uh, turned it into a method of his. He calls it a uh, two pencil method. But not to brag, but I was using it before it was it was called that but naturally he uh, as a as a comic book artist he was using this combination for many many years obviously because he saw some of the advantages of combining these two types of pencils so back to me talking about the movie uh, there are several good things about the movie even if you don't go into the specifics uh, the movie doesn't have uh, one of those strong empowered kick-ass action female characters uh, that are boringly ever present in modern movies women are portrayed in their traditional roles as wives and mothers 
the movie doesn't portray men and especially white men in a negative light they are soldiers and heroes and it also doesn't bash the US history and the Western civilization either there is no forced diversity it's just a regular World War II movie so that alone makes it better than 99% of the movies nowadays the fact that the movie makers just chose to focus on the actual events the movie also has a decent characterization decent characters the plot is a little bit rushed because they wanted to include some of the events that led to the Battle of Midway but it is what it is uh, they did the best they thought best they could I guess I always thought that battles like this are much better described in a documentary in fact documentaries about Midway are probably <laughs> even better than this movie even though the movie is entertaining and like I said it's a good movie so don't believe the reviewers go watch the movie it's not a waste of time I'm working on uh, Luke Evans's uh, facial features these two pilots in the movie were some of the main characters that had key roles in the battle uh, they flew dauntless dive bombers and the American the American forces destroyed four aircraft four Japanese aircraft carriers that day Dick Best pretty much destroyed two of them and McCloskey it was his decision that essentially changed the course of the battle because the group of the dive bombers that was led by him changed course in the crucial moment and attacked found and attacked the Japanese carrier carriers up until that point the Japanese were pretty much winning the battle uh, but the American bombers arrived at the, just the right time and did a tremendous amount of damage face still looks a little bit flat so I'm doing some more additional shading to give it more depth and shape and also a little bit more texture I want the skin to appear a little more realistic a little more rough um, like I said one of the challenges when drawing on this format is to get the face right because the facial features are smaller you have less room for mistake but so far so good once I finish drawing McCloskey I'm going to move on to the bottom part or the lower part of the drawing the small scene that I'm going to create there I also thought about maybe adding some more stuff to the background but I decided to keep it relatively simple as simple as I can make it with, with a complex composition such as this one So I just added a few more details uh, with a black colored pencil around the eyes and the eyebrows and the mustache just uh, trying to make that a little bit thicker 
like I said, it's always good to step away from your drawing and maybe add a little more value where needed. Both of them have fairly high and prominent cheekbones. So I did a nice bit of shading there. And after that, I just moved on to his clothes. I'm gonna do a com uh, I'm gonna do the shading using a combination of an HP graphite pencil and a black colored pencil. I usually like to draw in uh, these darker areas where there is some shadow, and then I add some mid tones and lighter areas on top. I think he's wearing some kind of scarf here. So it has a lot of folds, which I need to shade in order to make them look realistic, but because uh, the light is coming over his shoulder, I'm going to make the left side of that lighter. I'm also adding a little more texture to the clothes as much as is visible here. You can see how detailed the drawing is now. Later I'm going to zoom in. I didn't really bother to zoom in while I was recording the drawing process, but later I'm going to zoom in so that you can see more of the details and textures. As you can see, um, I've already started working a little bit on the airplane. So like I said, this is the Dauntless uh, dive bomber. and I'm drawing some of the US insignia there. This little thing that I'm drawing now is the machine gun, uh, the rear machine gun that was supposed to defend the airplane from the uh, from the attacks from behind. So the plane had a two-man crew. The gunner and of course the pilot was also in charge of the bombing Dick Best's gunner was Murray and here is the engine and the propeller I uh, made this area a lot darker but I decided to leave out a few of these lighter, almost white patches so that we can see that this is that there's some more detail there, I'm just trying to create an illusion of detail I'm going to do something similar on the hull of the plane as well you can see how I made some suggestions of a turning propeller there it doesn't have to be very detailed or visible uh, in all of the places, uh, so I'm just I added also these attachment points under the plane, uh, which are used to carry the bomb. So I'm shading the hull. I'm trying to leave some of the lighter areas, so that it looks like it's made of metal. And here, as you can see, I'm moving on to the carrier. This is going to be a Japanese aircraft carrier. So hopefully I can draw something that kind of looks like a ship, like an aircraft carrier, with a large deck and a red dot on it, which is the Japanese symbol. I'm going to have some foamy waters around it and some waves and stuff like that and I'm going to make it look like the ship has uh, been hit by a bomb so I put down some uh, graphite powder that I created by sharpening uh, graphite uh, sticks I think those were 8B Graphite, stick, uh, graphite sticks. I randomly spread that 
around to make it look like thick smoke and I'm adding some lighter areas in that thick smoke to make it look like something is burning like really big fire with a lot of smoke and I also added some uh, highlights to the water to make it look like waves but I wasn't really happy with the amount of detail in the water so I eventually decided to redo it I added some of these dots on the aircraft carrier to make it look like there are some people on it so like I said I uh, blended the the portion of the water under the carrier and decided to redo those waves with just a few suggestions of uh, ripples here and there and some foamy foamy water around the carrier itself and at one point I realized <coughs> I didn't have enough contrast between the carrier and the water so I decided to add a little more value to the carrier and erase a little bit more around the carrier so that it stands out a little bit more I don't have to make it too detailed, just a few suggestions of details in the this deck below. So it's fairly realistic. The important thing is uh, for the viewer to be to be able to understand what's going on that it's a bomber that just destroyed one of the carriers and the carrier is burning and there's a thick smoke coming out of it so I'm just putting down some finishing touches on McCloskey's face I'm gonna have to remove the tape and spray this with a fixative before I sign it and maybe add some finishing touches I'm going to leave it like that. I'm pretty happy with my composition. I'm going to have some white space around, but that's fine. I I created a nice balanced composition with most of my elements punched in the center of the drawing. So maybe just a little more shading here on the on the chin. And I kind of wanted some more value uh, down here. I wanted, I wanted to shade a little bit lower so that a little bit more of his clothes is visible but, it, but it's probably too late to fix that so I'm just gonna push a little bit of, um, a little bit of that graphite downwards and just maybe refine some of the details here and that'll pretty much do it I'm going to sign the drawing on the right because Ed's head is kind of sticking out in the upper left portion so I'm gonna have my uh, I'm gonna have my signature in the lower right in the bottom right portion of the drawing. I also did a little bit of cleaning up with a kneaded eraser. I like to use a kneaded eraser for the final cleanup because it doesn't leave any residue. And there it is. That's the finished drawing. Make sure you give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. I have lots of other drawings you can watch. I zoomed in a little bit so that you can see more of the detail because there's lots of them. The smoke also turned out nice even though it was done in a slightly different technique. I used powder for that instead of regular sketching. 
So there it is. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.